Hello and welcome to another episode of Zenotes Live. Today we have Afreen with us with another bio chapter. Over to you, Afreen. Hello, everyone. So today we're doing IGCC Biology Chapter 4. That is drugs. Okay, so we're going to learn about drugs here. Um, you need to know, you need to be able to define what are drugs and you need to be able to talk about some antibiotics, just one actually, and you need to be able to talk about the effects of antibiotics and how, the basics of how an antibiotic works. And you need to know about one example uh, of a bacteria and how it is affected by antibiotics, right? So the first point is a drug is, a, is any substance taken into the body that modifies or affects chemical reactions in the body. So if you remember from the previous chapter, you remember how drugs like heroin affects the process going on at the synapse. So that is basically the chemical reactions they're talking, talking about here, more or less, like there's other stuff, but that's what you need to understand at this level. So this is something you need to memorize. A drug is any substance taken into the body that modifies or affects chemical reactions in the body. Now, Antibiotics are also classified as drugs, and these are drugs that are used to control or kill bacterial infections. So if you have any bacterial infections, your doctor would most likely prescribe you an antibiotic unless you know they think there's other ways to treat it because um, if you're like, you should be aware of this, antibiotics should be taken with care because they, the bacteria that the antibiotic is catering to could grow resistant to the specific antibiotic. So that's why you need to be careful how much antibiotic you take. And if you are prescribed antibiotic, you need to be able to make sure that you are take, taking it for the whole course and you take the exact amount that, that you were prescribed. So you're not taking any less or any more than what you were prescribed. So antibiotics are specific. Each type kills a different sort of bacteria. So, so an antibiotic that works for one bacteria may not work for another bacteria. An example of um, antibiotic is penicillin and methicillin. The other one, I'm not even going to try to read that, like, let's be honest. Uh, but you need to know, be able to talk about penicillin and methicillin, just be able to name them, because these are two uh, examples that are mentioned in the specification. Okay. And some bacteria are resistant to antibiotics, which reduces the effectiveness of antibiotics. So that's what I was talking about, you know, like if some bacteria in the history, like in the, ever since the discovery of antibiotics, they, when they were discovered, they were hugely popular and they were prescribed for every little infection. And what some of these bacteria did was grow resistant to some of these antibiotics. So now these antibiotics do no longer work on the bacteria, you know? So scientists need to spend time and money coming up with alternatives that work on the same bacteria. So you need to come up with something new or something stronger, something probably that's probably more expensive. So that's why antibiotic resistance is an is a problem that can cost us time, money, and it can take lives. You know, if we're not developing the alternative fast enough, it's going to kill people. You know, it's the people who are affected by these infections and they don't have access to the medicines in time they are going to be affected, they're going to be um, seriously ill, and they may take longer to recover, or they may die, you know. Another point you need to be able to make is that antibiotics kill bacteria, but they don't affect viruses. This is because antibiotic works by halting some of the processes in a bacteria, right? And viruses do not show all of these processes. For example, cell walls, or respiration. These are some of the pro uh, things or the processes that the antibiotic messes with and the bacteria is uh, killed. However, viruses cannot be affected the same way. Now, some bacteria cannot be treated with antibiotics. And once again, these are said to have antibiotic resistance. So about this chapter, the biggest point is antibiotic resistance. Like if you have any question from this chapter, it's extremely likely that it's going to be about antibiotic resistance. So this is something I really would recommend you learn properly because this is something you can easily score marks in, you know? And so this slide really just describes what I just said. Antibiotic uh, uh, resistance occurs when humans consume lots of antibiotics and the bacteria reproduces and variation occurs. Now, what is variation? That is how when basically the process of natural selection, 
you know, how parents pass on some of their uh, genes to their kids. And it, this is something you learn about in more detail in chapter 17, I believe. That's variation. So don't worry if you don't understand what that is. But you need to know that the bacteria reproduces and variation occurs. And after a few strains, the new bacteria will be resistant to the antibiotic. OK, after a few strains, that is after a few generations, right, the new bacteria will be resistant to the antibiotic. So it doesn't happen like one parent develops resistance. It's not like the offspring may or like, will definitely um, develop the, uh, will be born with the resistance, you know. It may skip the gene and then the, when that offspring has offsprings of its own, those offsprings may have the resistance or maybe their offsprings, you know. So it can skip generations. However, it is being passed on and at one point, and you know when the reproduction occurs with other resist, uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria occurs the children are more like the offsprings are more likely to have antibiotic resistance you know so that's what they mean here after a few strains after a few generations the new bacteria will be resistant to the antibiotic at one point all of the bacteria that's uh, being created have the resistance to that specific antibiotic and then you know scientists have to go through the whole process of creating the whole, an alternative um, reducing the development of antibiotic resistant bacteria is essential to make sure antibiotics are effective against bacteria. This is a no brainer. You need to make sure that bacteria doesn't grow resistant to antibiotics simply because, like I said, it, it's going to cost us time. It's going to cost us money. It's going to cost us lives. You know, these are three points you need to be, uh, you need to be able to make on your paper. And using antibiotics only when essential can develop uh, can limit the development of resistant bacteria such as mrsa what is mrsa that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus something like that you don't need to know the full form of it you just need to know about the name of the bacteria mrsa and that it is resistant to the antibiotic methicillin and then you need to be able to process uh, describe the process of antibiotic resistance and uh, that's it for this chapter. Let's look at a question. This is October, November 2018. Question number 26. The graph shows the number of cases of MRSA in one country between 2001 and 2006. So that's a five year period. The x axis shows the year, the y axis shows the number of cases of MRSA. So it's from 5,000 to 8,000 because we've got a curve. Between which years was the greatest change in the number of cases of MRSA seen? Okay, this is more of a skill question. Okay, you, uh, you need to be able to analyze graphs. So this is something you need to do in other sciences as well, per, probably math too, not sure. So when they say greatest change, you're supposed to look at the gradient and when they say least change, also you look at a gradient, but when it's least, you look at the gradient, which is the least steep. And in this case, they're ask, asking for the greatest change. So you look for the gradient, which is the most steep. So if you're going to compare the different lines on this graph, the last line looks the steepest to me. So that's between 2005 and 2006. So that's probably where the greatest change was. So let's see if that's an option. Yes, option D is 2005 and 2006. So that's when the greatest change was. Let's look at the answer. But pretty sure that's the answer. Like when you look, uh, use all your skills, you know, you, you're, when you're able to analyze the graph, you should be able to make out that the greatest change happens between 2005 and 2006 because of how steep the gradient is. And um, I guess that's it. That's it for this chapter. It's a short, simple one. So it's easy to score marks in it. Thank you for your time today, Afreen, and we hope you now have a better understanding of the topic. Thank you.